All right, all right, what's going on YouTube? So this is the official review of the ZT777. Oop, just kidding. 7770. <laughs> 770. Lots of 7ZT, you're confusing me this year. So did an initial overview video when these first came out and um, been carrying the knife for probably the last eight days, I guess it's been. And I'm absolutely loving it. Just loving it. I mean, it's a perfect EDC. And I said that about the 566, which it still is. But I tell you, this is... I don't want to say better, but... Because it's a different animal, but I really dig it. And um, it's so smoothed out. Like, look at that. No more squeak. Nice. It's, um, this is de-assisted, by the way, still. You know, I took it out right on the first video. Look how easy that flips out. No wrist push the button so it, good to report that it's definitely smoothened out I did a follow-up video just on my iPhone real quick to show it but as time has gone on it's even smoothed out even more um, so let's talk about the 770 um, what I like about it I love the size it's about just just right like it just has you know if you had big hands this knife is gonna be a little too small for you but for me medium sized hands perfect um, so it fits my hand really nicely. It's very ergonomic. It's lightweight. weighs 3.7 ounces, so it's super light. So if weight's a concern for you, um, definitely choose the 770 over the 566. It's a little, quite a bit. Um, it's almost two ounces lighter because of the aluminum scales. Uh, let's talk about the aluminum scales. They've held up very nicely. You don't see too many scratches. Again, this was an everyday carry for the last eight days. No scratches on the scales, so they've held up really nicely. They're smooth. They're a little slick, but they do have some grip. I mean, you can see my thumbs not just smooth sliding right off. So they do have a little little grip. Um, all black hardware, which is nice. Flipper's nice. You know, I took the speed safe out. Works great. I love the blade shapes. That modified worn cliff, just like the 777. Uh, just obviously smaller. It's three and a quarter inch blade. The L Max steel is held up just fine for me, which I'm not at all surprised with because it did on the 566. And it has on all the other LMAX knives I've had. Um, I don't, again, really hard to use my knives though. Um, I just do typical EDC tasks like I think, you know, 75 to 80 percent of us do, maybe even more. So it's held up just fine. Um, it's still just as sharp. Yeah, it's still just as sharp as when I got it from the factory. And if I can snag a piece of paper without bumping my camera, there we go. I'll do a cut test for you and show you how sharp it is. And I've used it quite a bit. I've used it to open up a lot of packages, cut down some cardboard, um, you know, mail, just your basic stuff. Nothing, nothing crazy or anything, but it's definitely scary sharp. And I haven't sharpened this. This is factory edge after you know eight days of, of continuous use. So. I think L Max is a good steel. Um, I think it's going to hold up just fine for them, everyone really. But um, yeah, so I'm not going to get too much into that. But I think it's doing great. So if you're on the fence about this one, um, I highly recommend getting it. I know everyone's waiting for the carbon fiber version, which I'm also going to get. But I really like this aluminum version. It's just a good. It's just a really good looking knife. I mean, look how. Love the contoured handles. It's just really good looking. It'd be really cool to see this come out in other colors of aluminum. I know they're only doing the carbon fiber regular production. These are actually limited run. Um, so, But it would be kind of cool to see it in different colors. I know they did that. They made those 350 aluminums in a small batch. And they did like an olive green and a brown. Um, it'd just be cool to see this in other colors like red or you know, like some of the blur colors they've done. That'd be pretty cool. So... If you're listening, Kershaw, <laughs> just kidding. Um, but anyway, um, my dislikes, the only thing I don't like about it is the clip. And it's not that it's too small, It's because it, it is. I said on the first video that it was the same clip as the 566, which is not. The 566 has a lo much longer clip. Um, and the, I like the clip better on the 566. It's similar design, but it doesn't, it's just, there's just too much retention in this clip. It's so stiff. I mean, it's... Hasn't really broken in much. I've um, been carrying it every day. And that's my one knock on this. And I've tried to take it off and bend it. <laughs> it was not budging. 
I mean, I couldn't believe it. So that's my one knock on this knife, is that the clip is a little too stiff and tight, um, and that may vary knife to knife. Yours may not be like that. So, um, But again, just a, it makes a really good EDC. Um, it could be a good gentleman's folder. I've carried it in slacks and stuff. It's lightweight enough. Um, the carbon fiber one will definitely be better because it's only going to weigh three ounces as far as that rule goes. But as a regular at EDC, this is a, a great knife. I mean, it's open pillar construction, so it's going to be easy to clean out. Uh, someone did point out in my video that this little pin here is like a lanyard tube, kind of like uh, Chris Reeves does on his knives. So you could actually do a lanyard around that little tube there. So there is a, an option for a lanyard. Tip up, carry left or right hand only, and they'll tip down. Um, it's not so it's not a four-way carry like most of ZT's knives are. But I'm really digging it. For the price, I mean, really good price. 144 bucks shipped is what I paid from Kershaw Guy. Um, I think that's pretty much the standard. I've seen them come a little little cheaper and some a little bit more expensive. But if you're on the fence, grab one of these because they're going to be limited production. They're not going to be out there. And then you know what happens after that. The prices go through the roof on the secondary market. So definitely grab one. It makes, it's for a great EDC. Um, I've just been, it's been a joy to carry and it works very well de-assisted. Similar, it might flip even better than, eh, it's about the same than the 566. I mean it flips really nice. It's very smooth. Um, no play. You know, very solid. Liner lock, good lock up. Uh, similar to the blurs type of liner lock. So, it kind of reminds me of a blur. Um, you know, the blurs have the aluminum scales, but then they have that tech track, or not tech track, what is that? That grippy stuff in the middle. Um, one of my favorite Kershaw knives was the carbon fiber blur. I had a couple of those, and that was pretty cool. It was because it was aluminum, and then it had the in carbon fiber inlay. So this kind of reminds me of a flipper blur um, with a little bit better steel, LMAX. So yeah, I'm definitely digging this one. I did. I noticed the Blade HQ did get some more in today. They're probably sold out now, but they may they may or may not. Have. But really, the design of this knife is just it's one of my favorite ZTs that I've seen. It's definitely grown on me. I had no intention of buying the aluminum knife, the aluminum version. I was waiting for the carbon fiber because it looks so good. It has the nicer looking pivot. It looks more like the 777. Um, but I'm really glad I picked this up. It's been a great knife. Been really enjoying carrying it. So highly recommended um, to get this knife. Now, if you're on the fence about these two, again, the the only advantage I see, I don't know that. The G10 is grippier, so if you it's very grippy. So if you need that, this is a stainless steel frame lock. This is a liner lock. So if you like frame locks, you'll want to get this one. Um, but really, get both of them because they're great knives. I mean, I'm really glad I have both. They're both going to see pocket time in my rotation. Oops. Um, I'm I'm going to have Rival uh, make me a custom scale for this one. I'm thinking I might do C Tech scale because I've been kind of wanting something in C Tech. So that'll look pretty cool. He's got one of these. He's starting to make custom scales for it. So that is the nice thing about this knife. It is a lot more customizable. You could do some uh, heat anodizing on the, you know, the hardware um, and the the frame. Um, I've got that LBS, the titanium. Um, that's actually faded. The anodizing, which is pretty crazy. So Pete Gray actually told me to send it back to him. I just haven't gotten around to doing that yet. So. But so the the and it's a hinder design. So the six five six six is a little more customizable. With the seven seventy, you're getting kind of just you're gonna get what you get, and that's it. You know, there's really not much customization you can do besides maybe you know polishing the hardware. But I like the black. I think it looks good. Um, you know, you could obviously mass wash the blade or something. But it's got a really a really really nice stone wash on it. So I don't even know why you would touch it. So it's it's more of an elegant knife. Um, but it is, you know, still somewhat, I guess, tactical, if you want to call it that, because it is a flipper. It does have a quick deployment. Um, I wouldn't classify it as a tactical knife. I'd classify it as a good, just an everyday carry knife that, you know, you could use for your regular cutting tasks. So, um, I think that's it. I mean, it's been a great knife. I, uh, like I said, I'll do a more in-depth review after I've carried it for a week. Um, you know, the lockup hasn't changed at all. It's nice and solid, like I showed you. Didn't expect it to because it's steel. It's not titanium. Um, so yeah, uh, definitely enjoying it. Definitely pick one up if you can. I know some people are kind of like thinking that it wasn't that great de-assisted, but I mean, look at that. No wrist. Flips nicely. Buttery smooth. I mean, 
Oh, but keep in mind, I did add an additional washer to this. Um, and I think I said that in my last video, but I did take, because on the SpeedSafe models, the lock side has a regular size washer, but on the SpeedSafe side with the torsion bar, it has a teeny, actually, I have one right here. Looks like that. Really small, right? So what I did is I took, I had a Kershaw Needs Work that I just had beat on, and I took the washer out of that. It's exactly the same size, and I put, so both sides have the same size larger washer. And um, I don't know that that added to any of the smoothness at all, but it definitely, um, you know, makes the knife a little bit more sturdy um, as far as your pivot goes and having larger washers there. So I actually have some other washers. I called up Kershaw. They're sending me a couple. I'm going to add another one to this one um, just to make that a little bit better. So if you're on, you know, if you're worried about that, it's pretty much standard. I mean, you may have an old beater Kershaw laying around that you could take the washers out of. It's the standard um you know, bronze washers that they use in most of their knives. So definitely a, a nice improvement. So that's that's definitely going to see a lot of EDC time. It's going to be in my rotation along with the 566, my 550. I mean, most of my rotation these days is Kershaw or um, mostly ZT, but a few Kershaws as well. Um, so yeah, there you go, guys. There's a review of the 770. Um, any questions or comments, uh, please leave them down below. And pre please like and share the video. And um, I'm going to have another video coming up soon. May do a couple non-knife related videos. Um, I've got a couple things I want to review. I do have a new firearm coming Friday that I'm super stoked about. I did have to sell a couple of my other guns to pay for it. So it didn't cost me really any money, which is nice. But... I'm pretty stoked about it, and I'll probably be doing quite a few videos on that because it's going to be a project, um, and yeah, it'll be fun. So I haven't done a good gun project in a while. It's been quite a long time since I did my Saga 12 build, and I didn't document any of that, which I would have. I wish I would have, but this one's going to be fun. This is an AR-style shotgun, semi-automatic as well, magazine-fed. Pretty stoked. Uh, pretty stoked. So I'll do some shooting videos with that, and I've got a couple other gear... Um, type reviews I want to do. So I may lay off the knife reviews for a little while. It depends. I don't think I have anything I don't have anything new coming. Um, I did just get an SE fixed blade that I may review, but other than that, um, I'm going to kind of tone down the knife videos for a minute and do a little bit more uh, as far as guns and some other gears concern. And then I'm sure, but you know, always is my channel. The, the, pretty much the name focus has always been about knives. So, Alright guys, uh, have a good one. I'll take care and we'll see you next time.